Well, welcome once again to another weekend worship video from here at St. Anne's, Toronto. My name is Don Barris, and I serve as a priest and pastor of this parish, and it is so good to have you with us. My friends, uh, our summer is slowly beginning to come to an end, and you can start sensing autumn is slowly upon us. I love this time of the year. Everything is so beautiful, and we still get those late days of summer warmth with cool evenings. My friends, as these days draw shorter and our nights grow longer, I invite you to take this time to maybe pause and reflect and ask yourself where God is in your life. How do you see God each and every day? Maybe it is through your friends. Maybe it's in something you do. But to pause during this time and to ask yourself where you see God. For me, I personally find God in the people I encounter, in the natural world, and in my walks, and in gardening. But I also find God in just the solitude of being in the space. And in the music we hear and the word proclaimed. So my friends, take a little time this weekend, take pause, and just simply be in God's presence and listen to the music and listen to the word proclaimed and pray with us. And after watching this video, I invite you to join us on Sunday, either at nine o'clock for Zoom worship or at 10.30 for our celebration of Holy Eucharist, which is also live streamed on Zoom. But you're welcome to come here in the church. My friends all are welcome here at St. Anne's, and I hope you will join us. For now, let us begin with our opening prayer. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and ourselves in your image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and to serve you with reverence and thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. and understanding among you. Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, 
unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. You covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nearer to God, and he will draw nearer to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? 
but they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me, the gospel of Christ. My friends, I don't know about you, but I love this weekend's gospel story. It's a story that has left an impression upon me ever since I was little. The story of Jesus welcoming the children to him. In this church, we have a couple of images and features that point to the story as well. In fact, there's a beautiful stained glass window just off to the back of the church. And it shows Jesus gathering the children to himself. And also above our baptistry, above where the baptismal font is, we have a part of the passage written on the wall, suffer the little children to come unto me, or let the little children come unto me. I think for many of us, this passage speaks very meaningfully to us. It's the story of Jesus who's compassionate, loving, a Jesus who welcomes and invites all into his midst. But the, this passage actually follows a very interesting scene. So the story begins, Jesus is with his disciples, and he starts sharing with them a little bit about who he is and what he's about. And he discloses to his disciples, among many times, that he must suffer die in order to rise again. The disciples, unfortunately, don't get what Jesus is talking about. In fact, Mark is rather funny in many instances in his gospel where the disciples seem to be utterly clueless. No matter how clear Jesus may speak, the disciples just don't get it. And not only do they not get it in this story, in what Jesus said, but instead of asking Jesus what he's talking about, they all sort of go off to the side, huddled together, and they talk among themselves. Perhaps they're debating. We don't know exactly what they're talking about, and we don't know exactly why they don't want to turn to Jesus. And it's sort of interesting. They sort of exclude Jesus from their conversation. And Jesus rightly gets irritated by this, and he goes up to them and says, What? were you talking about? And they share with him, we're trying to figure out who the greatest is in the kingdom of heaven. The response is rather funny, because Jesus just got done talking to them about the need to suffer and die in order to rise again, and the disciples are more worried about who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And then Jesus brings the children to himself. In bringing the children to himself, Jesus is actually trying to share a very powerful message to the people of his day. And I have to offer a little background here, a historical background. Many scholars believe that at the time of Jesus, in the Greco-Roman world, children were simply non-persons. They weren't as held as greatly in importance as we do today. In fact, I came across one writing in which a man was advised, if there was a fire in his house, to first save the elders, the men first, and then his mother, then to save his wife, and then ultimately to save his children. So the children were last. So children didn't play as important role or weren't considered with any status at the time of Jesus. And so by bringing the children to himself, Jesus is making a very clear point that God favors those whom the world ignores or rejects. Moreover, if you want to know God, you have to become like them. 
You have to let go of all your pretenses, all of your concerns about your social status and who's important and, and what's going to make you great in society's eyes. And simply be. Be who you are in that innocence and in that humility. So he gathers the children to himself. The gospel is actually a challenging one for us because unfortunately in our own day and time the Christian message or Jesus message is often misinterpreted. We often hear people try to twist Jesus message in such a way that tells us that if you want to be success, successful, if you want to do well in life, embrace the gospel and you'll be wealthy and everything will come together. But that's not what the gospel is about. It's almost like we're like Jesus' first disciples. We just don't get it. We just don't understand. And sometimes even in the church we can be bad about this. I know myself that can be the case sometimes. Getting so concerned about what do people think of us rather than just simply being and letting go of all our preconceived notions of what it means to be important in this world. But even more so, there's an even more challenging element to the story, and Matthew refers to this in his gospel. If you want to experience life, if you want to experience freedom, you're going to have to take up the cross and die to self in order to enjoy the life that God offers us. So while in our world we may think that the gospel, living the gospel life will make us rich and wealthy, that's not what Jesus tells us. Jesus promises us life, abundant life, but in order to experience that, we have to let go of all our preconceived notions of what that life might be, and to simply be in the presence of God. As one commentator said, this weekend's gospel is a liberating gospel. This gospel invites us to not be so concerned about what others think about in the world, who thinks of us as important, how wealthy we may be. Rather, this gospel invites us to simply rest and be in the arms of Jesus and to let go of the world's notions of success and live according to God's notion of life and success. Amen.
In the time after Pentecost, may the breath of the Holy Spirit enliven and renew our parish as we welcome our pastor, Don Byers. Like the apostles, may we at St. Anne's be open to fresh challenges and to new ways of living our commitment to each other. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us continue to pray for those who have safeguarded our lives during the pandemic. Let us pray that vaccines will be available for all, both in Canada and throughout the world. May the Holy Spirit inspire us to find creative paths toward a just economic recovery for our city. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray to the Holy Spirit that we may discern her gifts given to us for the building of God's kingdom. May the flame of creativity inspire artists in every field, men and women of science, farmers, office workers, and laborers. May all work be blessed in God's eyes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the mystical body of Christ, pray that we may embrace every race, religion, and nation as beloved members of God's kingdom. Let us pray for the leaders of Canada and of the world and for the work of peace and reconciliation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the apostles received the gifts of tongues, let us ask the Holy Spirit for the gift of listening to the stories which haunt our city in the words of immigrants and refugees, of those without homes, and those who bear painful emotional burdens. Let us listen and respond with care and attention. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us contemplate with awe and wonder the mystery of creation from the starry heavens to the humble life of plants. In the season of rebirth, let us pray for all nesting birds and animals with their young. May their revelation of God's love inspire us to protect and care for the natural world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Hello. Warden Dave Roeder here. And I could update you on the normal business affairs that we talked about at the corporation meeting this past week, about how our finances are less in the red due to more rental income, or the successful parish hall planning meeting we had with our consultants. I could do that, but instead my thoughts turn to gorgeous late summer weather we are experiencing. And I hope that you are able to spend some time outside in natural surroundings. That's what a few of us did after last Sunday's worship service. Planting in our pollinator garden in the front Gladstone yard of the Ministry Center. It is dubbed a swallowtail garden, named after the butterflies it's designed to attract. I hope that we will have more swallowtail planting events and further engagement with Clement Kent, the York University professor behind a lot of efforts to recover nature in Toronto's urban environments. Clement is a font of knowledge, and as we toured our fledgling garden, he had something interesting to say about each of the plants, like pointing out that the hollow stems of our raspberry bushes are where a certain bumblebee lays its eggs. Well, he and Don started a conversation about how religious traditions have historically been aligned with environmental stewardship. Since Clement is an expert on bee habitats, he noted the importance of bees and honey cultivation in many Mediterranean religious cultures. We still have a number of native plants that have been donated and they need to go into the ground. During these final warm weeks, why not take half an hour after attending church or any other time you may be there to dig in two or three plants. Let me know directly or via Mary Lou if you could do this and I'll set aside some plants along with a suggested placement. We have garden trowels and planting soil available. This Sunday I'll be doing some garden planting while I'm at the community dinner. This outreach activity led for many years by Roy Schatz is made possible due to the efforts of volunteers from our church membership and neighborhood friends. Somehow, I feel that if Roy were able to join us, he'd pick up a spade and dig it and plant something in our swallowtail garden. God bless and stay safe. Well, my friends, once again, thank you for joining us for our weekend worship video. It's so wonderful to be able to Put these videos together. I'm really grateful for Thomas, our videographer, for his extraordinary help with these videos. And also for the readers and for the choir members and singers and, and Mervyn as well, our organist. So it's, it's a real delight to bring these videos together. My friends, in addition to our weekend worship video, I invite you to join us on Sunday, September 19th at 9 a.m. for our Zoom prayer and worship time. That's a time for us to have casual conversation as we discuss the readings. It's, it's a lovely time and to be able to pray together. My friends, I also invite you to join us for worship either in person or online at 10.30 a.m. as we will celebrate Holy Eucharist in the church. It's so lovely. It's been fantastic to welcome people back, to be with people and just simply be surrounded by this extraordinary church and to be together. So again, join us at 9 a.m. on September 19th on Zoom for discussion and prayer, or join us a little bit later in the morning at 10.30 here at the church for worship. A couple other announcements for this weekend. My friends, as you know, on the third Sunday of every month, we have our community dinner. I invite those of you who live in our community uh, to come by to enjoy a meal. I believe it starts about 5.15, 5.30, so come by the church. And Thomas is nodding to me to help me out. My assistant here helped me remember everything. So do come by, but even more so, if you can help us out, let us know. If you can't help this month, that's fine, but maybe consider helping out in October. Again, we always do this on the third Sunday of the month, and we could use any help that people can offer, whether it's simply cutting up some vegetables, putting uh, bags, meals together, um, anything. We could really use your help. So 
If you want, drop us a note here at St. Anne's. Uh, we'll have the information posted at the bottom of your screen for how you can do that. Also, can you imagine October is getting closer? Keep eye on our Facebook page and on our website because on the first Sunday of October, we're gonna remember St. Francis of Assisi, that wonderful saint who had such simplicity and holiness, but who also enjoyed the glory of God's creation. And so my friends, on that day, we will be having the blessing of pets and animals. We'll post details on our website, but we'll offer a time for you after church that Sunday to come on down to bring your dogs, your cats, maybe even your snakes, if you like, <laughs> and we can bless them that day. It's a day to really celebrate uh, the glory of God's creation and to honor what, the good things that's around us. So that will be the first Sunday of October. Also, my friends, just another announcement that I want to make is we are in need of volunteers, not only with our community dinners, but also with our celebration of Eucharist on Sundays and with our online worship videos. As you saw, we had a couple of people read the readings for our videos. And if you're interested in doing that, we would love to have you help out with that. Or if you'd like to help us out during our Sunday liturgy, we would love that as well. We'll help you out. I'll show you the ropes, how you do things. So. Maybe you want to be a server, a reader, a greeter, whatever it is that you'd like to do, do let us know. And maybe you'd like to sing. We have cantors who sing our hymns and, you know, surround us with the joy of music. So if you're interested in those things, reach out to us and know we'll be glad to have you with us. My friends, again, thank you for joining us. And know that I'm praying for you and if there's anything you need, reach out to me. My email is posted at the bottom of the screen. Don't hesitate to drop me a note to let me know how I can pray for you, be with you, and support you. And before I forget, one last important detail. The church is open. <laughs> so join us on Sundays at 1030, live here at the church, or join us as well on Wednesdays at 1030 for Eucharist, Thursdays for morning prayer at 930, which we also live stream on Facebook. The church is open all day Thursdays. It's a Thursday today. Come on in. It's a lovely space to be. If you just want to sit, read, pray, whatever it is, come come on by. And join us Thursday evenings for Eucharist at 530. My friends, may God bless you. May God keep you. And may God let God's face shine upon you always. Take care.